Hello, Richard Spizzano here from Digitally Fearless, and this is part four of my powerful two-bar playlist. If you missed parts one, two, and three, the links are below, so check them out. Before we begin on part four, which is the selections toolbar, I want to backtrack on a couple of things. One is the big mistake I made, and many of you told me about it, so let me show you what that was. I had originally had part three, and it said pain brush. Now, maybe the brush is a pain when you don't know how to use it, but I was hoping that after you watch this video in part three, that it would no longer be a paintbrush. So I hope it now that it's a paintbrush. And I did make a mistake and I do apologize. Fortunately, I was able to change the thumbnail of the video, but YouTube doesn't allow me to edit it without creating a whole new video. And I didn't want people to have to lose the link to the first video. So it is what it is. And this is what happens because I wing it when I do these tutorials. And I learn as I'm doing them, just like you learn. So I find it more fun that way. And that's just my style. And hopefully you like that style. But let's get back to this one. Part four is selections. I'm also going to backtrack one more time. In part one, I had talked about the move tool. And there was one of the items that I thought was interesting and I didn't know exactly how to use it. So let's go to the move tool and we'll, we'll just grab a selection of the whole group. And on the move tool right here, says transform objects separately. And I was trying to explain it. For example, I was grabbing a corner here and everything will follow this corner, just like that. So I'll undo that. So really what I was trying to say is that it's almost acts as one piece and, that, and we're transforming this as one whole unit. But one thing that I found interesting, oh, let me show you the other way. So now I hit transform separately and it only shows one of them, so you grab a corner there. Everyone has its own origin line, so that's where it goes there. But this is what I found, because I didn't try this last time, and I thought this is really cool, and I'll figure out ways to use it, and I'm sure you will too. If you turn it, they all turn. So that's kind of a cool effect, if you want everything angled a certain way. Angle it any way you want, and each one turns on its own. So I think there's, there could be a lot of uses for that. So I just wanted to backtrack on a few things. So now we're going to start on part four of the tutorial on selections. So let's get started. I went into stock photos and typed in dog and, and Unsplash had these dogs. And I dragged this one right out onto my canvas. And it is free to use. So that stock thing is fantastic. You don't have to search the web. You can go to... Pexels, Pixabay, or Unsplash, and I love this feature. So let's just work with this right now. So let's go back to layers here. And we are going to use two different types. One is called the Selection Brush Tool, and one is the Rectangular Marquee Tool. They are both selection tools. So let's just click the Selection Brush Tool. And what that does is I'm going to keep, I'm going to have add on in the mode on top on the toolbar. It says add. And that means like I'll drag like this and then I let go and then I continue to drag and it adds. And then I let go and I continue to drag and it continues to add. And, but if I click subtract, it takes it away. Now I never use the subtract button. I always keep it on the add because as I'm, as I'm painting, if I made a mistake like this, I will hold down my Alt key, which is the same as subtract, and go right over it. So if you want to use the button on top, you can. I prefer using the Alt key. So let me deselect, which is Control or Command D, or click up here that says deselect. That's the, that's the first two things. The width, same as all the other things. Um, whatever width you want, you can raise it. I do not, I don't use that. I use my bracket keys, left bracket makes it smaller, uh, right bracket makes it bigger. So if you want, you can just get an exact pixel number, but I just prefer doing it the other way. So let me deselect that, control or command D. And let's see, next is snap to edges. I almost always have this on when I use this tool because if you don't have it on, 
and I go, let's follow some edges. Let me make my brush a little bigger, and I follow these edges, and it's kind of like it just does exactly where you put it. So let me undo that, and now I'll put on snap to edges, and now when I look at that, it actually jumps, and it tries to find all your edges. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Let me tell you, it's very good. Look at me, I'm only tapping. I didn't even have to, I'm just like clicking with my mouse and it's finding the closest edge that I can. So I can select this dog and very quickly. I mean, that's pretty, and I, I wanna get all that and maybe a little bit more there. And that's pretty good. For this tutorial, I'm not going to be perfect with it but you get the idea of that. Refine, I want to do refine. All layers means you're just going to select with more than one layer. It'll follow those lines with more than one layer and refine. Let's select this guy again. Okay, so once again, I don't have a perfect selection, but if I hit refine, a box opens up and it shows the red overlay. I don't really like the red overlay. I like to see what it looks like in different colors. So that's what it looks like when it's transparent. That's what it looks like on the black. So if you have a dark black background, you plan on putting this on, that's what you would look at. If you have a light background, you plan on putting it on, that's what you'd look at. And what I kind of like to do is usually, not all the time, but I kind of feather this, maybe a 0.1, and I leave it at that. And then I could say apply, which would leave me still, the, it would still leave me a selection. Or I could say mask, which is putting a mask on that layer, or new layer, or new layer with mask. So if I say new layer with mask and hit apply, and I can, then the other one is turned off, and that's my layer. So now, now I have that one, and if I move that, it did a pretty good job, and I did that so quickly. Look at the pretty good job it did. That's the original, and that's the new selection. So that's what refine is. So let's uh, delete that. Okay, so let's go down to the selection tool. The one thing I did want to show you that people don't realize, if you click this freehand tool, Photoshop has another thing, and it's called uh, Polygon, and I use Polygon a lot, and that's how you get to it. They should, I feel like they should have put it on this drop-down, just like they do in Photoshop, but you have to go to the freehand tool. So let's just keep the regular freehand without clicking any of these. So this is freehand, right? And you let go, and it just closes automatically. So we'll deselect that. And then this is Polygon. So Polygon, you click and you keep clicking and it keeps going until you get to the beginning or you double click and that closes it off. So that's your Polygon. So it's great for straight edges. Let me deselect that. And Magnetic up here is what they used to use before this uh, brush selection tool. Magnetic is you click once and you just let the mouse flow and I'm not clicking anymore it's trying to follow its way to the edges and it's pretty decent but the, the brush selection tool kind of does the same thing so um, I think there are still uses for this but I think most of the way most people have used the other one and let's just go like that I know we missed the bottom but and it's not perfect Okay, but there's a selection, and of course, we can always um, add to the selection right here if we want to just like drag around here, you know, things like that. So that's that's what the magnetic tool is, and I thought I thought those are important to show, and that's kind of pretty much it for the selection toolbars. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and. Make sure you subscribe because I'm going to continue on these toolbars for the next few series. Many of you have given me great comments and I'm thrilled about doing these tutorials. I hope you have a great day.